30 years ago, the company that made your family's VCR decided to go all in on video games. And honestly, kind of a bad idea with the 3DO and Jaguar bombing right out of the gate. But with enough care and research, Sony sailed where others sank, and the oddly named PlayStation became a household name. Which is why we turned to you, dear viewer, and asked, what's your favorite PlayStation console and why? And my goodness, did you answer. In fact, if you want the chance to win a PlayStation 5 Pro, then listen up. All you have to do is comment on a participating thread over on GameRant.com. We'll leave the link in the description to make it easier for you. Participants must be 18 years of age or older, premium Game Rant members' comments are worth double, and newsletter subscribers will have opportunities to earn bonus entries. Contest ends on November 12, 2024 at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time, so make sure to head over to GameRant.com before then. Good luck to all those who enter, and now let's get Red E with this week's Gamer Set. First up is Cinder Kitten, who picks three as the lucky number. Quote, PS3 when it first came out because it was fully backwards compatible, so I could play all my PS1 and 2 games plus all the new PS3 games coming out. Plus, it was nice to have wireless controllers that could be recharged, which made gaming so much more comfortable not having to stay within cord range. End quote. And I agree, Cinder Kitten. Folks not old enough won't recall the days when absolutely all controllers had to be wired, and wireless pads were cheap gimmicks. These days, wireless is the default, but the 6-axis and the eventual DualShock 3 allowed players to eventually get lazier and cozy up on the couch without worrying of pulling your $600 console off the shelf. Marlin also follows the rule of three and says, quote, Although the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 are game changers, I gotta pick PS3. My reasoning is it was a Blu-ray disc player so some people purchased it for that. Forget the gaming. PS3 introduced the PlayStation Store, which had the largest library of movies back then. Also, the ability to surf the internet and watch YouTube via smart TV. I used to sit down with my family and have a great time. Also, no more memory cards or multi-taps. Never mistakenly erasing a saved game again, and no longer needing an extra device to play a four-person game. PS3 just made life better overall. That's my vote. Again, what a great perspective. This shows what the PlayStation 3 brought to the table, a heck of a lot more storage and the ability to play Blu-ray movies. At the time, some folks were skeptical Blu-ray would be quickly replaced by a newer technology. Well, it's been nearly 20 years since the PlayStation 3 launched, and even Xbox jumped on board with the Xbox One, so the PlayStation 3 was certainly ahead of its time. And lastly, for the PlayStation Trio is Joey, who says, quote, the PS3 mainly because it was the last console where development time was short enough to churn out quality games regularly. We got multiple games or trilogies from franchises like Resistance, Ratchet & Clank, God of War, Uncharted, Infamous, Dead Space, Bioshock, and some great indies incubated by Sony Santa Monica in the early days of downloadable games. The massive 40 to 60 hour games we get these days are great, but I'd trade them all if it meant we could get 8 to 10 hour games more frequently. I think the concept of a console trilogy is dead in the current state of gaming." End quote. Now, Joey might sound like a downer, but personally speaking, I 100% agree. And really, this was an issue even before the PlayStation 3. And to Sony's credit, they attempted to address this. Like Joey said, with a tight 10-hour campaign, all killer, no filler, and then you're on to the next game. Some may say that makes games disposable, but uh, we're still talking about these games almost 20 years later. Clearly, they left a much bigger impact than their playtime. Vince gives us five reasons the PlayStation 2 is the real winner. Quote, the PlayStation 2 is my most favorite PS console for the following reasons. 1. Massive game library. The PS2 boasts the largest library of any console, with over 3,800 titles. Genre variety. From countless franchises like Grand Theft Auto and Metal Gear Solid, to innovative originals like Shadow of the Colossus, there was something for everyone. Backwards compatibility. The PS2 could play most PlayStation 1 games. DVD player. Having a built-in DVD player was huge, making it a multimedia entertainment center. Cultural impact. The PS2 shaped gaming culture with groundbreaking titles and online experiences. End quote. These are all good points, Vince, and there really was something for everyone on the PS2. The console sales exploded around the world to the point where oddities like Mr. Mosquito was getting full-blown Western releases. But if I had to nitpick, and I do, I would say yes, the PS2 had groundbreaking online experiences, but really only for the PlayStation brand, as the PC and Xbox were frankly more ambitious in that area. But there's a good reason the PS2 sold over 150 million units. 
Jake McMichael chimes in for the PlayStation 2, quote, The PS2 era was chock full of games that I still play today. Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, Shadow of the Colossus, Jack and Dexter, Ratchet and Clank, Star Wars Battlefront, the list goes on. PS1 and PS3 were also full of classics, but the PS2 era had a charm to it that I longed to see recaptured, end quote. And I think we're seeing a pattern here. The PS2 had something special that is missing today. Well, you might be talking about game engines. The way games were often developed back on the PlayStation 2 often meant building areas from scratch. Of course, the bigger players in the industry began licensing everything in sight, streamlining production. But it does mean that everything popular today does share similar DNA. Up next is Dan, who shares a special perspective on the PS2 because he used to sell them. PS2 is my all-time favorite console. I worked at Circuit City when he came out and kept seeing all the pre-ordered systems getting picked up. Once I was able to buy my own, the games were amazing. So many great moments in gaming happened on that system. The first part of MGS2, GTA, FF10, Gran Turismo, and NCAA College Football to name a few. Plus a DVD player. That's why it was my favorite, and it always will be the GOAT system." End quote. I can only imagine how seeing new consoles go out the door every day at work only made the wait longer. And don't think I didn't notice that swipe it right in in Metal Gear Solid 2, gotta respect the grudge. But everyone has pretty much said the exact same thing. The PS2 had a boatload of games that looked and felt like nothing else before or since. And on top of being a darn good DVD player, who's up for watching The Matrix? Up next is Sabello Monzi with The Dark Horse Candidate. Quote, well, to be honest, I never had a home video game console, like the main PlayStation console. The OG PlayStation Portable, PSP, was my introduction and my very first love to console-based video games. I used to game on that puppy like Ragnarok was coming. Nothing else mattered when I had that console in my hands, and playing classics like Jack and Daxter, Dragon Ball Shin Budokai, and GTA Liberty City Stories to name a few. The PSP is my favorite console, even though it's the only console I ever had. Because of the bittersweet experience of childhood and its nostalgia that reminds me of better days." End quote. Well, that was unexpectedly touching and is a good reminder in how the long scheme of things, perspective matters. In fact, while there are many players only just discovering the robust library of the PlayStation Portable, folks like Sabella were right there day one experiencing it in the palm of their hands. The PSP sold perfectly fine and was popular enough, but still feels sharply underrated in 2024. Up next is Dave, who gets as old school as you can get, saying, quote, PS1, purely because it was my first. It's where I was introduced to Final Fantasy 7 and 8, to Resident Evil 2, to Metal Gear Solid, and so many others. I wish I could go back and play them again for the first time, but I'll settle for many happy memories of the OG and best console." End quote. You're right, David. The PS1 was right where 3D games hit their stride. And don't the publishers know it? It's the reason why Square Enix is currently remaking Final Fantasy 7, and it's the same reason Capcom remade Resident Evil 2. These companies are mining for nostalgia, and sadly you can never really go back, but you know what? These remakes are pretty good. Up next is Matthew, who agrees that number one is number one. Quote, the PlayStation 1 will always be my favorite. I have so many fond memories of that console and it really stirred my love of many of the classic series. From Armored Core and Ace Combat to Metal Gear Solid and finally to Final Fantasy and Tekken, years ago I traded my PS1 when I upgraded to PS2 and realized there was such a nostalgia factor missing that I had to buy another one and I never looked back. End quote. I gotta say, Matthew, you're right about the classic PS1 console. The way the lid pops open, it feels like a perfect little toy that can easily get dusted on the lens. Look, there's a reason design has moved past the PlayStation 1 and its digital pads and odd pre-rendered cutscenes, but I certainly haven't. The PS1 is always a good time, and the graphics hold up fine. Yeah, I said it. Up next is Andrew, who skips ahead a couple of decades to talk about the PlayStation 4. Quote, I have always been a PC and Nintendo gamer, but I have always liked the PS4. Just the design of the console itself was simple, yet very pleasing. The controller is comfortable for just about all users, even me with huge hands. Though for me, it was the library that got me. Bloodborne needs no introduction, and anything that runs Red Dead Redemption 2 is a worthy console in my eyes. Just so many beautiful and fun games on that console that I feel this generation still has to live up to." End quote. And good point, Andrew. The PS4 was certainly the console where Sony put aside childish things like viewing email and printer settings and going back to focusing purely on games. It caught a lot of players off guard who would assume Sony would maintain their path towards obsolescence. But nope, the PS4 shook up the whole industry and Sony nabbed over 117 million in sales. 
Science Cat Laser Jeans also picks the PlayStation 4, but for a much more personal reason. Quote, I would have to say the PS4 takes the win for me. I most certainly love the PS5, but the caliber of games that came out in the PS4 era were just next level. Red Dead 2, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, the list is just awesomely long. Prior to the PS4, I had dropped out of gaming around the late PS2 stage, so when I returned I was like, oh my god, this is what games are like now? In hindsight, my enthusiasm may have been slightly unfounded. Around that same time, I had become a single father to my son, and it provided me so many bonding opportunities. I otherwise may not have had. It was an easy way to work out what was going on in an organic way. To this day, every single night without fail, we have game night, where we play games we've played a thousand times before and just talk about random things about his day. I will always be thankful for that. So yeah, it's the PS4 for the win. Wow, Science Cat Laser Jeans. That's about as charming of a story as we're going to see today, and a good reminder of the power of entertainment. Sure, video games are nowhere near as important as the relationship between a parent and a child, but that's what makes them special. Games allow people to connect in trivial but engaging ways, to unwind, to have fun, while participating in a virtual world. For some generations, it may have been chess or going fishing, but for many of the parents today, a controller is just as good, and a great way to connect to your kids on their level based on their interests, all without leaving the house. House. Bonus! Anyway, we want to thank everyone who submitted their answers for this week's Gamer Set, and encourage everyone to check out the link for more information if you want the chance to win a PlayStation 5 Pro. Keep the conversation going, as well as the game nights, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody!